Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Clark and I'm going to show you how to code this adorable snowman. Let me show you what I mean when I say we're going to code it. So we're making mystery reveal pictures where you write your own questions and if people answer them correctly, the picture starts to pop up pixels at a time to make a final picture. So this is just an example here. We're going to be making this snowman. Um, so go ahead and grab the snowman. It's in the link in the description below, um, or you can click on the other link to get the full um, set for winter. And we're going to go ahead and get started. You can also make your own design. You want to make sure first that you're set to 75%, not 100, because otherwise it's hard to see. And then you want to make sure that your picture is already done. The next step is to write in your questions and answers. So you just click on the box and you can write your answers here and then, or your questions, and then you need to come over here and answer them. And you can see what you're typing up there. And if you hit delete, it'll delete it if you wanna write something else. Okay, I answered all of them and some of these pixel arts have an extra question down here. So I had to do that one too. Okay, now before I start coding, I wanna get a good idea of how many colors I'm working with. So these are all the colors in the snowman. There are 10 colors and there happen to be 10 questions here. So that's really easy because I'm just gonna code one color at a time. So this one can be all of the light red and this one can be all the black or whatever. Um, the next thing I want to draw your attention to is the code we're going to be using. It's down here. I suggest that you write it down. The code is equals dollar sign column dollar sign row equals answer. What this means is when I'm coding something, let's say I'm going to code this box. I have to tell it three things. The first thing I need to tell it is what box am I coding? What box am I talking about? The second thing I have to tell the computer is what color do I want it to be? And the third thing is what needs to be in the box to activate the code. So that first question was, what is the name of the box? We name every box in this slideshow or spreadsheet has a name. This one is called nine or B four. So B because it's column B and then four because it's row four. Now I know that I, I combined a bunch of rows to make a super row, that's why it's this size. So it's four, five, six, and seven, but you use the top one. So this box is called B4. This box is called B8. This box is called B12. This box is called B16, so on and so forth. So I have to say, what box am I talking about? This one is B4. And that's why the code says um, column row. So I'm gonna put in equals dollar sign B, dollar sign four. Um, and then I have to say that I need it to be the answer nine. That's what they have to type in. You'll have a different answer on yours. And then I'm going to pick the color I want it to turn. I'm going to start with the black because it's the easiest one for me to find. Okay, so I'm going to click on the box I want to code. Click on the answer, come up to format, and click conditional formatting. That opens up this window we'll be using. I'm going to come down here and tell it what color I want it to turn. Black. I also, I don't always have to do this, but I'm going to change the font color to white so we can actually see it. We go. Now I'm going to write the code. So come over here where it says format cells, if dot dot dot, click and come all the way down to the bottom. Custom formula is. Now I'm going to write in my formula using that code. It is equals dollar sign column, so this box is in column B, dollar sign row, it's row four, equals what? What do I need it to equal? Nine. Now I'm going to show you because we technically have written the code. It's actually ready to go. What I just did is I said, if the number nine is typed into this box, this box needs to turn black and the font will turn white. So if I delete it and there's nothing in it, it's no longer black. If I put a nine in it, it turns black. So this code is actually successful. But I mean, I, I wanna bring the snowman along with it, right? So now what I'm gonna do is open that code back up and I'm gonna include all of the black from the snowman so that when you type in nine, it doesn't just turn this box black, it turns all of these little boxes black too. So let me open this code back up. Um, and this is the last step that we do here. 
So we chose our color, we wrote our code. Now I'm going to come up here where it says apply to range. You can see the B4 through B7, that's the nine box. It's already in there, which is really important. But now I'm gonna to add to it. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this, move this over, and it's really important that I hold down the control button, or if you're on a Mac, hold down command. What that does is it keeps what you've already clicked on so you can add to it. I've already clicked on that box with a nine in it and I need to keep that. Now I'm just gonna start clicking on the pieces I wanna bring along. And I'm gonna do all of the black. You can also kind of click one at a time or if they're next to each other, you can click and drag down a little like that. If it's hard for you to see the, the kind of nuance and shades in the color, it's not the end of the world, but um, this has like a dark gray off to the side, so I'm not gonna click those. If you click something you didn't mean to click, just click it again and it'll disappear. Okay, so I got all the black. Now I'm gonna take my finger off of that control button that I was holding down. And also you wanna check that this one is still selected because that's really important. Okay, so take your finger off that button and now I need to do three things to finish up. The first thing I do is I hit OK on the data range. The second thing is I hit Done over here. And the final thing is to come up to the paint bucket and hit Reset. If you don't do that, they're going to stay black no matter what. OK, now everything's still selected, so I need to click off of it. And I'm going to come up and test it. So when I delete this, all of the black should disappear. And when I put the 9 back in, it should all come back, including the nine box. There we go. Um, and notice when I put that nine in, I had to click somewhere else to make it go. So we're gonna go ahead and do the next one. All right, but delete that because if you keep the black in there, it's gonna, it's gonna get confusing. Uh, let's do the orange, just this darker orange. Let me click on it, see what color that is up there. Okay, so it's this standard color there, great. All right, click on your next answer box and come over to the conditional format and hit add another rule. Or if you lost that, just do it the way we did before, like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go through the same process. Tell it what color I want it to turn. Write your code. So this one is dollar sign B, dollar sign, what is that, eight, equals, and in this case, I need it to equal mercury doesn't matter if it is uh, capitalized. Now, um, I have to put quotation marks around this because it's a word. With the numbers, you don't have to, but if it's a word, you do have to. So just put quotes around it real quick. Yep. I'll look that turned orange over there, so it's the right code. Now, add your range. So Mercury is still selected. Hold down Control, though, so you don't lose it. If you do, I have a troubleshooting video you can watch that shows how to fix it. Okay, I did that. Take your finger off of control or command and do your three steps. So hit OK on the range, OK on the code, and reset the paint bucket. So OK, done, reset. As I go um, off of it, let's delete it, put it back in, go off of it, and there it is. Delete it so it doesn't get in the way. So um, before I code my next one, I want to make sure I'm clicking on the right thing. You see how I'm clicking on uh, the wrong thing? That one's already been coded. You can see the code over there. So if I want to code Denver, I have to click on that box. And then I'm just going to keep going. So I want to do uh, this like dark red, not the darkest red but this one, and I have to look at it first, otherwise I won't be able to find it. So I'm gonna like click on it, come up to the paint bucket, and see that, there it is, it's the third red in on the custom. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to find it. All right, so add another rule, and then find the color. So one, two, three, there it is. Let's change the font color on this one, and we'll write our code. So again, it is equals, dollar sign B, which is the column, dollar sign 12, which is the row, equals, and then put the answer. But remember, since this is a word and not a number, I do have to put quotation marks around it. Quotation marks, quotation marks. 
Um, and now the upturn red over there. So that's how I know I wrote the code correctly. Click on my data range, hold down control and select the pixels that are part of this color. I'm doing all of them, all of the dark red. Now, uh, take your hand off of control and do the three things. Okay, done, reset. Now check it. When we get down to this uh, five down here, I don't have to use quotation marks anymore because it is a uh, just a number. So my code, let's do the red there. My code is just going to be equals dollar sign B dollar sign, what is this one, 16 equals five. No quotes, because you don't need them for numbers. Apply my range, and I'm gonna select all of this bright red, beautiful red color here. So you're just gonna kind of chug along. You can see when I get to these two grays, those ones are gonna take a while because I'm selecting a whole bunch. So you just have to be patient with this project. My three steps, okay. Done, reset. At this point, I'm going to speed up and do the rest of these quicker. So you can keep watching if you want. You're also welcome to go ahead and try some on your own. All right, I'm going to show you the last part here. So you can see that I have one question off to the side here. This one is the answer box because five times eight is 40. So the question is just, what do you call it? So the column here, if you look up, trace it up, you can see that it highlight, highlighted these for you. It's A, B to A, L. Well, you're going to just take the first one. So this is called A, B. That's the column. So these were all column B but this one is column AB. And then the row, if you come all the way over here, it's 37. So let's just code this one together. Click on add another rule. Mm, I, don't, I don't quite remember what gray that was. So let me come over here. I'm gonna click on it and just see. It is third from the right. Okay, great. Let me come back over. I don't want that. Okay, click, it's third from the right. All right, and now we'll write our code. So it is equals dollar sign, and then this one was, let me come over. You can always click off of it too. A, B, and then C, you can just come back right in. A, B, dollar sign, and then it was row 37. See how it's highlighted there? So this one's A, B, 37, and you can check it because if you don't code it right, that 40 box is gonna disappear. It stayed gray, so I did code it correctly. And then this one is um, so much. So I'm gonna be selecting all these grays. Something you can do is you can grab one and kind of keep 
clicking and drag and make sure you have control pressed down. But you can kind of select multiple pieces at once. That should save some time. So yeah, that's how you do um, that kind of random box down there that has a weird name. I am almost done coding my snowman here. I'm so excited to test it out. I wanna tell you a couple things. So one thing I mentioned before, I have a separate video called troubleshooting that you can watch if like, if you accidentally left a piece behind or like you forgot to code the answer and it's not changing colors and you can't find your code, things like that. And then also one thing I wanted to tell you too is that before you give this to somebody, you want it to be blank obviously. So don't have the answers filled in. And then you want to make a copy of it too, because even if your snowman is blank, um, it still like remembers that it was just a snowman. <laughs> so you want to delete all the answers, but then also make a copy of it just to have it really, really clear. And then give that copy to people or assign that copy to people or send that copy to your teacher. Um, so like this one right here, if I give this to someone right now, um, when they open it, it's going to like flash a snowman at them for half a second and then go blank again. So the surprise is ruined. So you just want to make a copy of it first and then send that copy to people. But yeah, our snowman is all done. Let's take a look at it and see how he turned out. And if you want to get the snowman, click on the link below. And if you click on the other link, there's two of them, you will get the whole pack of winter um, pixel arts. And you can watch all the videos and, and code all of them if you want to. So here's our snowman. I hope this is fun for you. And I can't wait to see what you make.